phone shows about 631. The clock on the wall looks about 629. Go ahead and call this meeting to order and ask for the roll to be called, please. Present. Present. Here. Dorslin. Here. Eisenman. Portado. Esri. Here. We do have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, seek a motion to for the approval of the agenda and addenda. Moved by Mr. Goss, seconded by Mr. Patterson. Is there any additions or corrections or anything anybody wants to make a comment on on that? Here's Ms. Portado. Mr. Patterson was right. You're just you were just a few minutes behind. <laughs> um, seeing none, we're voting on the agenda and addenda. Stephanie. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Thank you. That passes. We'll then move on to four, the approval of minutes. We have the elect commit from the elect committee meeting of November 8th, 2018. Is there a motion to approve? Moved by Mr. Goss, seconded by Mr. Patterson. Is there any corrections or additions to be made to those that anybody saw? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Thank you. That passes. Public participation. I only have two slips right now. Um, I'll just, oh, okay, you bring it up. Bring them up. Yeah, thank you. Oh, n yeah, not a problem. <laughs> not a problem. Thank you. Um, do ask the, um, keep your comments to about five minutes in length um, and um, step up to the, and have a seat at the chair in the front and turn the microphone on. Um, the first person I have up is Mr. Patrick Fitzgerald. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, my name is Pat Fitzgerald. I'm a local attorney with the firm of Meyer Capel in Champaign, and I'm appearing before you this evening on behalf of Baywa, the uh, developer of the proposed Prairie Solar Development. I will try to condense um, three nights of testimony at the Zoning Board of Appeals into five minutes. So here we go. Uh, George Gano is with also, he's with Baywa, and uh, he'll be assisting me. So the, go ahead and go to the next page. So the Prairie Solar, uh, solar development is a 150 megawatt development that is proposed to be located uh, near Sydney, Illinois, in southeast uh, Champaign County. Uh, the initial site, uh, that we have under option is approximately 1,609 acres. Of that, about 1,200 acres would be fenced in. So there's a significant amount of land that is under option uh, that will not actually be subject to the development. Uh, there's 16 participating landowners. Um, obviously, all the options are voluntary. Uh, we, we have no power of eminent domain or anything of that nature. So. Uh, they were arm's length agreements reached with the property owners who own the land in question. Moving along. Uh, just to summarize some of the local economic benefits, uh, this is a large development. Uh, it's $250 million total investment in our county. Um, it would take about 18 months to build. We would anticipate construction, if we were to be approved uh, by the county, construction would begin in approximately 2021. Uh, there would be over 1.5 million local skilled construction man hours. So there's a very significant employment factor to the development. Uh, this slide summarizes uh, some additional local economic benefits. Uh, perhaps the most important is to your sister taxing bodies, particularly the school districts. 
uh, the total tax revenue anticipated by this development would be in excess of seven hundred thousand um, dollars and uh, it would also generate approximately 15 permanent jobs what you see before you is the original site design uh, and, and you see it the development uh, being on the south side of Sydney both on the southeast and southwest we met with the people of Sydney and we received a lot of negative comments about this site design in particular the subdivision south on the southwest part of Sydney those homeowners were not pleased with this design. Baywa listened. They made adjustments. Can we go to the next? And, and the site moved to the east. And I think a, a, a very significant reason why there is not a room full of Sydney residents tonight up in arms about this is Baywa listened. Baywa has a strong commitment to being a good corporate citizen. I'll expand on that a little bit in a few slides to come. But I think this is a good evidence of their commitment to try to be responsive and, and work with the community what, rather than do whatever it is that they choose to do. The county recently developed a solar ordinance for solar farms. The proposed development uh, meets or exceeds the requirements of your ordinance with three exceptions. And let, let's pause there and talk about those. And they're the waivers that are part of this. And I want to make sure that everybody understands the sum and substance of the waivers. Two of the waivers I would consider to be technical in that they deal with the timing of certain obligations, not any relief from those obligations. And, and, and what those obligation, or excuse me, what those waivers are is one deals with the decommissioning and site reclamation plan. The second deals with the road upgrade and maintenance agreement. Baywa understands full and well that prior to any construction of a solar farm, there would be a de decommissioning and site reclamation plan that the county approves. They further understand that there would be a county approval required for any roadway upgrade and maintenance agreement. I think the waivers deal with the timing of when those approvals come into play. Right now, this is somewhat speculative. And I think that it is premature for not only Baywa to invest significant time and money in negotiating a roadway and upgrade maintenance agreement, but I think the county engineer, Mr. Blue, and the Sydney Township Commissioner feel the same way. We have had conversations. In fact, I believe you received an email today, uh, Chairman Esri, to, to that effect. I, I was literally on the phone with Mr. Blue's office today. The road and maintenance agreement, it's not a new concept. There is a 15-page agreement that the county reached with Ameren several years ago that we have agreed with Mr. Blue would be the basis of the road and maintenance agreement. But given that you folks haven't approved this development going forward. It didn't seem prudent to spend county money and township money negotiating an agreement that may or may not be used. And given that we've got 18 to 24 months before this development would actually be built, the belief was that there was a reasonable amount of time to negotiate, bring that back to you for your review and approval. Uh, Mr. Fitzgerald, um your five minutes are technically up. Um, make a, com a few comments here, especially for the two new members, Ms. 
to me, um, King Taylor, and Mr. Thorslin, um, and and for Mr. Fitzgerald and all the people here. Um, we're usually at, in this committee. We've been pretty open about letting the um, having conversations with the public and people who are here on the specific issues, but doing that more when it actually gets to that issue in the agenda. So um, we've usually just, I've usually just asked if there's any objection to basically you could say it's suspending the rules and having that conversation. If we wanna make it formal and take votes on suspending the rules, we can do that. But um, I guess I'd, at this point in time, Mr. Fitzgerald, just to kind of keep things going, I ask maybe if you could just wrap it up real quick and then if you, I assume you'd be willing to stick around and um, ask any, uh, you could finish your presentation, then maybe um, ask, we could ask questions from you and get feedback and so on and so forth. Sure, Mr. Chairman, would you like me to finish the presentation now? How much, or, how much longer do you think it would uh, take? Three to five minutes, although lawyers tend to have a. <laughs> why don't we, why don't we wait, why don't we wait till we get to okay. that agenda item? And, okay. and the good. idea, and I'll, I'll say this, the idea of having conversation back and forth, um, not going to just say it just extends to those people from Baywa. that extends to the other people in the audience as well. So. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next person I have is a Mr. Andy Robinson. Hello. Thank you very much. My name is Andy Robinson. And um, I just wanted to come I, uh, and speak on behalf of, of solar projects in general and, and this solar project. Um, I came to some of the county uh, discussions over the summer and I thought it was a very uh, worthwhile experience to, to um, share some of um, my experience and my, and my thoughts. And um, I, I don't know all the details about this particular solar farm, um, like how many people's homes it directly borders, um, but I do drive along the uh, Homer Sydney Road and weekly to get to Fairmount. And um, so I drive past the Frito Loy factory and the train tracks and the Ameren substation there. And um, in my Eagle Scout project, um, was on prairie plants. Um, so I'm very interested in the pollinator friendly aspects of solar farms and um, the ideas of putting in thousands of acres of pollinator friendly plantings um, under the panels, around the panels, um, you know, low, uh, low intensive flowering natives uh, that have been discussed um, out of Minnesota, out of farms in Minnesota, I think are really um, exciting opportunities here. Um, more intensive prairie sections along the exterior of some of these farms that have been discussed are really exciting opportunities, both for pollinator friendly and biodiversity, and pollinators also help support our, uh, our farm crops, our traditional crops as well. Um, so I'm really excited to see those in, in these farms and these proposals. Um, and um, the solar panels on the roof at our house offset most of the electricity for our home, but they don't offset our heating, they don't offset our driving, they don't offset the products that we buy, um, and not everyone can put solar panels on the roofs of their homes. So I think that uh, solar farms like this are a really exciting opportunity for us, uh, for farmers to diversify their portfolios, but also for all of us to have cleaner air. And, uh, and my kids, when we drive by Abbott Power Plant, they point at the smoke that comes out of Abbott, and they say, our house doesn't make that smoke anymore. So they, the younger generations really get this, and I think that they're, they're looking forward to having renewable future, renewable clean energy in their future. Um, when I stood tonight at, the, um, at sunset at the U of I solar farm at Windsor and First, I was, um, it's a beautiful time to stand at, out at the sun, uh, watch the sun setting, the, the panels were silent, the inverters were silent, um, I could hear the cars on Windsor driving by, um, it was just interesting and I'm really excited that the, the next uh, farms will be more pollinator friendly, that the, one of the criticisms of that farm was that the, the grasses grew up tall and the, the company from Arizona didn't know that Illinois grass grows tall. And uh, we have vine weeds that grow up poles in the in the wild. So um, I'm excited that campus is also having discussions about for future solar farms about pollinator friendly and more native uh, plants within the uh, within the solar farms there too. Um, I don't think we're discussing wind farms tonight, um, but it's good to remember the differences then differences between wind and solar technologies. With solar being passive and solid state, and wind being a mechanical machine that requires service and makes makes sound. And I remember that was the 
topic of a lot of conversation over the summer, and a lot of time was spent talking about wind instead of solar. Um, but uh, it's also interesting to talk about the, think about the mini electrician jobs, installation jobs that this will support, um, and um, and what the impact, the overall impact on our state will be for getting 25% renewable by 2025. Um, the, an industry talk this week on campus was talking about um, we have 75% of Illinois acres are, are agricultural acres, and uh, meeting the solar uh, targets is going to cover something like 0.004% of, of Illinois. So it's interesting to, to think about. You, we have 75% um, agricultural now. Even 1% towards solar would be 100% of our electricity. Would we be OK with 74% agricultural? So it's just kind of interesting to think about that big picture. And um, points were also made about Illinois' new ag land use policy for decommissioning and reclamation and uh, requirements for protecting tile drainage systems. So I was happy to see that those came out over the summer as well. And it's really good timing, I think, with um, projects that are going on in our local county. Uh, in closing, my family and my kids think solar energy is one of the best clean energy technologies. Um, first weekend, we had our solar turned on in our house. My kids asked if we were vacuuming with sunshine. And I said, yes, that's exactly what we're doing. I like the idea of diversifying our land in Illinois and, um, and cleaning, cleaning our air. So thank you very much. Thank you. The next name I have, I believe, is a Mr. Jarrett Klim. Or, or is it Claire? Klim. Klim, OK. Yeah. Uh, first, I'd like to thank you guys for taking the time to uh, hear me. Appreciate that. Uh, a little bit about who I am. My name is Jarrett Clem, and I grew up about four miles east of where this proposed uh, solar farm is going to be located, uh, third generation family farm. We farm uh, all around there. I farm with my dad, uh, and I raise livestock. We live, my wife and I live now in the Flatville area, uh, rural Flatville. You guys are familiar with that. So um, I wanted to speak in favor of the solar farm tonight. Uh, as well as being a farmer, I'm the business manager of IBW Local 601 in Champaign, uh, and I'm vice president of the building trades. The skilled labor jobs that a project like this would bring to our area would be just incredible. Um, it, it's an impact that the community, I know you guys have seen the numbers uh, with the taxing bodies, but just as far as the, the workers, the boots on the ground, that would be incredible. Um, for everybody. This is uh, a project that has been designed carefully um, and and delicately with, with the trades. And I think it's something that would be uh, a major benefit for uh, the workers in the area. Um, a lot of the trades now, our, our main focus is training and education for our workers. Um, and this would be something that would help us push that. Our local represents about 550 electricians. We go up to LaSalle Nuclear Generating Facility, which is a nuclear power plant, um, and then we go down to Tuscola. We, we have electricians that, that do all sorts of uh, electrical work from, like I said, the, the bigger nuclear facilities all the way down to wiring houses. Um, currently, and I'm going to, I believe we've, we've done the biggest solar farm in Illinois. Somebody might be able to. Uh, to correct me on that, but we did the Grand Ridge Solar Farm, which is 180 acres uh, with, with members of our local union. So we have experience uh, building these solar farms, and I've seen the impact of what that does for those communities and taxing bodies. Uh, it worked out extremely well. That was probably six or seven years ago now, and, and uh, I would love to see that opportunity come to uh, this area. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next name I have is a Mr. Jeff Revel. Revel, sorry. Thank you for having me, listening to me, I guess. Uh, I'll try not to ramble on. Just, uh, I'm here, basically, I, I'm a resident of Champaign County. Um, I, you know, I, I served in the Navy. I'm also, you know, I am an electrician for the University of Illinois as well. Um, and I've also kind of been in your position, I mean, not at this aptitude, but your position. I served with the Village of Trustees at Colono for four years until I had to resign because I moved out of the town and I went to the township. 
anyways, uh, I'm here because uh, I think it was a great opportunity, and, and I was able to see, like, as a trustee, like, some of the opportunities as a village, you know, it, people, um, our constituents may pass on, and I believe this would be great um, for the whole entirety of Champaign County, not just, you know, who, I, every decision in this room or in this county always, you're never going to please everybody. And, uh, but I believe this will be great for the whole county. Our, our children will benefit. I have kids in Unit 7 um, for the next 18 more years. So, let's put it simple. You know, I'd love to see it where they have uh, cleaner energy. You know, uh, we, we've done coal scrubbers in the coal plants and everything, and it's nasty. You know, we, we have this clean energy, and uh, Andy brought up, a, Mr. Robinson brought up a good point over here with the pollination of the plants and everything. It's great. Um, you know, I've I seen a slide for the education. I mean, that's huge for uh, Unit 7 school districts, uh, your heritage school districts. And, I mean, just think about what it's going to bring, you know, for them communities, the IGAs to St. Joseph, uh, Homer, all these, you know, the sales taxing income and, and everything. But I think it's really great. Um, you're going to reduce on the, I call it carcinogens, but the releasing in the environment with coal plants and everything else. Um, this is clean energy. It, it really benefits our waterway. I'm a huge fisherman, and, and we love to see this. We're, we help out with uh, um, the fish habitats with Lake Shelbyville, uh, with crappie fishing. I mean, uh, I'm out. I'm out there. We we do help out, and, I, and I'd love to see this come to our county, and the, and the tiling. And I I read something on, this is going to be fixing part of the infrastructure along with Sydney Township. It's a huge region. I, I'm about eight miles from Sydney, um, and th and that's huge. You know, drainage is a problem across, especially your southern part of Champaign County. I'm sure you guys are aware of, and I live by one, um, but I. It's great to take all that perspectives in, and you know, and, and they're coming with a plan. Um, I would just say, uh, my personal opinion uh, as a parent and as a local resident, I think it's a great opportunity for the whole county and entirety, especially the uh, southern part. Thank you. Thank you. Those are all the slips I have. Does anybody else care to participate? Before we close public participation, seeing none, we will close that. Thank you, Tammy, for shutting the microphone back off. Uh, we'll move then on to communications. Are there any communications? Anyone on the committee? Or I'll just say welcome to back to the returning members to ELEC, and welcome to Mr. Thorsland and Ms. King. Taylor to the ELEC committee. And seeing no other communications, we will then move on to seven. We have new business for information only. We have A, letter dated 11518 from the Village of St. Joseph Mayor, the Village of Savoy President, and the Village of Muhammad President requesting re evaluation of zoning ordinance requirements for solar farm. John, do you want to say anything about this? Well, uh, members received this letter uh, just prior to the November ELUC meeting. We didn't get time to put it on the agenda. I just wanted to let you know that we discussed this at the December 14th, 2018 RPC Technical Committee meeting. It was discussed with uh, Mohammed Savoy in the city of Champaign. Uh, the home rural municipalities have a much different view of things than the small villages. They go about things a different way. We discussed how this could be revised to reflect that. I'm going to take draft language back to the February 15th RPC Technical Committee meeting, and I hope to have a draft ordinance for your review uh, at your March 7th meeting. Discussion questions on this? Seeing none, we will then move on to B. Miscellaneous emails and information from Ted Harkey regarding noise from solar farms and wind farms. Again, John, do you want to speak towards this? It's kind of self-explanatory, but... It, it is completely self-explanatory. Uh, 
Mr. Hartke provided these emails for both ZBA and ELUC, and this is my first chance to get them in front of you. Um, these are from Mr. Hartke. Discussion on these. Seeing none, we will then move on to information only C. We have the IEPA notification of RCRA hazardous waste renewal application for Safety Clean Systems Incorporated, located at 500 West Anthony Drive, Urbana. This is routine, I know. Uh, we get this one every year, I believe. John, is that correct? Or is, or is this or is it I, not every it, year? It's not every year. I don't know what the renewal cycle is. Um, and, they, and they come so intermittently, sometimes it's hard to get them onto a committee agenda, but we do every time we can, so. Discussion on this. Oh, no, 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 no action. This is, I, we don't really have anything to do with it. It's basically just a notification, right, to right. the county. Right, I, I think the idea is in case the county did have comments, this would be a, a time they could provide them to the EPA. Seeing no further discussion on that, we will then move on to eight new business, new business items to be approved by ELUC. Um, we have A, the annual renewal of recreation and entertainment license is, I guess you could say, um, if there's no objection, I'll just go ahead and read all of them. We'll do them basically, you could say omnibus for the approval of these instead of having to break them out one by one. Okay, seeing no problems with that, we have um, the first one, Alto Vineyards, 4210 North Duncan Road, Champaign for... 1 1 19 through 12 31 19. We have two Champaign County Fair Association annual license for Champaign County Fairgrounds 1302 North Kohler Avenue, Urbana, including the Champaign County Fair July 19th through July 27th 2019. And that would be for the period, for the period, it's not, doesn't show on here, but for the period 1 1 19 through 12 31 19. Three, Generations Music Booking, NFP for Christian Music Festival, Champaign County Fairgrounds, 1302 North Kohler Avenue, Urbana, July 3rd through, through July 6th, 2019. Four, Gordyville LLC, 2205 County Road, 30,000 North, Gifford, for the period 1119 through 1231-19. Five, Tin Cup RV Park, Incorporated, 1715 East Tin Cup Road, Muhammad, for the period 1119 through 123119. And six, Hudson Farm Wedding and Events, LLC, 1341 County Road, 1800 East, Urbana, again for the period 1119 through 123119. Is there such a motion to approve? Moved by Mr. Thorsland, seconded by Ms. King Taylor. Discussion? These are all annual renewals. They're about the only one, I think, is this, is Hudson Wedding the first true year for the first full year, or is it the second on that? I, I think it's the second. Second, I, okay, it's it's the newest one, but it's been approved before, and I didn't remember if it had been a full year before or not. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Thank you, that passes. Go on to B, annual hotel motel license for Urbana Motel Incorporated at 1906 North Cunningham Avenue, Urbana, period 1119 through 123119. Is there such a motion? Moved by Mr. Patterson, seconded by Mr. Thorsland. Um, I'll just make note, um, this is the only hotel motel in the county, so it's the only one that we have to, <laughs> well, especially maybe for Mr. Thorsland and Ms. King Taylor, and it's the one out there on um, Cunningham. It, like if you were heading out, it's on the south side of seventy four. But like if you were heading out towards Farm and Fleet. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Thank you. That passes. Okay, we're on to. Nine, new business items to be recommended to the county board. 
We have A, resolution approving the application for and if awarded acceptance of Department of Homeland Security, Federal Emergency Man Management Agency fiscal year 2019 pre-disaster mitigation grant. And I'll make note that there were a few corrections that Ms. Monty passed out a revised uh, resolution that should be at your C. Is there such a motion for this? Moved, moved by Mr. Goss, seconded by Mr. Thorsland. Uh, discussion, Susan, do you wanna fill us in on this first? Sure, uh, in December um, on, on the 18th, uh, we submitted a grant application um, before this resolution was considered and reviewed by ELUC and the county board just to meet the deadline requirements. And so it's coming forward to you in January, the, the first available opportunity after that deadline. So this is a renewal of a plan that exists and it, there is a mandate to update it every five years that relates to the availability of additional funds to use for mitigation in the event of a disaster. So. It's, it's in the interest of the participating communities to have an updated plan on file and to use the updated plan to guide mitigation actions. It's a grant request for about $70,000 and with the federal portion of that grant provided 75% and county in-kind local match of approximately 17,000, which would consist primarily of planning staff labor. The expected date of availability would be of the funds would be January 1st, 2020. However, there is a chance that funds could be available sooner. Thank you, Susan. Uh, discussion questions on this, Ms. Furtado. Um, so I have two questions. So first, you would be we would we would be bringing in staff to do this. Is that how, or would some of our staff time be going? Or how does we we, we don't engage a third party to to facilitate? We use the GIS consortium staff for certain analyses and we have a, a, pleas a hazard mitigation planning team consisting of uh, area representatives from local participating local government. I facilitate the committee. And the second question I had, I saw that um, you know, participation of agency stakeholders and the public. Are there public meetings that are part of the planning process? Definitely, every every portion of the planning update has to include public participation. Yes. Okay. And you'll keep us informed when those are up. Thank you. Further discussion or questions? Seeing none. All in. Favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Thank you. That passes. Okay, we'll then move on to B, zoning case 898-S-18, Baywa RE, a request by Prairie Solar One, LLC, wholly owned by Baywa RE Development, LLC, with Chief Executive Officer, Jam Atari, uh, Chief Financial Officer William Gully, and Chief Operating Officer David Sanders, all with offices at 17901 Von Carmen Avenue, Suite 1050, Irvine, California, 92614, via agent Patrick Brown, Director of Development for Baywa RE Solar Projects, LLC, 17901 Von Carmen Avenue, Suite 1050, Irvine, California, 92614, and the participating landowners listed in attachment A to authorize a photovoltaic solar farm with a total nameplate capacity of 150 megawatts, including access road and wiring in the Ag 1 and Ag 2 agriculture zoning districts with a fenced solar farm area of approximately 1,191 acres on a total of approximately 1,609 acres in Sydney Township in sections 11, 12, 13, 1, 15, 2, and 23 of Township 18 North, Range 10 East of the Third Principal Meridian, with land exceptions as described in Attachment A, including the following waivers of standard conditions. Part A, a waiver of a distance of 1,175 feet between a photovoltaic solar farm and the 
CR Conservation Recreation Zoning District in lieu of the minimum required one half mile per section 6.1.5B 2B of the zoning ordinance. Part B, a waiver for not providing a decommissioning and site reclamation plan that includes cost estimates provided, prepared by an Illinois licensed professional engineer prior to consideration of the special use permit by the board per section 6.1.1A3 of the zoning ordinance. And part C, a waiver for not entering into a roadway upgrade and maintenance agreement with the relevant local highway authority prior to consideration of the special use permit by the board per section 6.1.5 G of the zoning ordinance. Is there such a motion? Or Mr. Patterson, you wanna move that? M Mr. Patterson moves, Mr. Thorson second. Um, do we wanna have Mr. Fitzgerald finish his um, presentation first? Mr. Fitzgerald, would you, and George, I don't re didn't catch your last name, I'm sorry, but if you care to step back forward and finish your presentation. Please. You, you don't have to speed up your talking. It's just oh, to okay. speed up kind of the gotcha. get, get through the process well, and to be kind of more the, fair to the, the just during the whole public participation part. No, pick, picking up where I left off, the, the third waiver that's before you uh, deals with the separation between the solar farm and the Conservation Recreation Zoning District. Um, your planning expert, Mr. Hall, in your case uh, that you approved the minutes of tonight, Zoning Case 903-S-18, indicated that in retrospect with the actual application of the ordinance, uh, he would not include the requirement for a separation distance from the CR Zoning District. In this particular matter, between the proposed solar farm and the CR district, there is a railroad, there is a highway, and there is the Frito-Lay uh, processing facility. So we would argue that those are mitigating factors uh, that, that reduce the need for that setback from the conservation uh, recreation zoning district. George, if we can go to the slide that deals with the land stewardship. Something that we've talked a great deal with Baywa about is that Champaign County is very proud of our farmland. It's the best farmland arguably in the world. A and at first blush, when you look at this proposal, you may say to yourself, well, my goodness, it's 1,200 acres. That, that, that's taking a, a huge amount of farmland out of production. And, and what I'd ask you to consider is the following. This is not a permanent conversion of the farmland. This is a temporary use. We're not dealing with Walmarts and huge parking lots. We're not dealing with wind turbines and huge concrete bases anchoring them in. In fact, the solar panels are affixed to the real estate by driving in basically an I-beam into the ground, and at the conclusion of the lease, the I-beam's removed, and the solar farm or the land goes back into produ uh, production. If you stop and you actually measure the amount of acreage that is impacted by the prairie solar farm, it comes out to be about 40 acres. Now, of that 40 acres, 23 acres of it are the internal roadways, just to give you an idea of, of the impact. There was extensive testimony at the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting by soil experts that talked at length about the fact that this land will rest for 30 to 40 years actually will make the land more productive when it's put back in to row crop agricultural production. It was interesting, your staff looked at what could, the, what could be done on this property currently as a matter of right. Well, as a matter of right, you could have 26 acres of this site impacted by residential development. 
So really, when you start to look at this site, we're talking about 14 acres. We're talking about the difference between what absolutely could be done today as a matter of right under your zoning ordinance and what Baywa is proposing to do. We would submit to you that the jobs being created, the real estate tax revenue, and the drainage improvements, which I'll talk about in just a moment, are a very reasonable trade-off for that additional 14 acres of ground that will be impacted. The drainage improvements, I think, are very significant, and I'd like to take a moment to talk about it. Of the 1,200 acres that this site will uh, include, Baywa has voluntarily, and this is a condition of the Zoning Board of Appeals approval, so this isn't just cheap talk, this is actually going to happen. Uh, Baywa has made a commitment to pattern tile all 1,200 acres. They have also made a commitment to replace the drainage district's main that runs through that property. There was testimony at the Zoning Board of Appeals by the drainage experts about the expected life of these drainage improvements. It will far exceed the 30 to 40 year lease term that Baywa will control the site. These are drainage improvements that are real and they're very long lasting. And so when you look at that in the totality of the taxes, the jobs, the drainage improvements, we feel that that is a very reasonable trade-off and something that's in the best interest of your constituents. The final site that I'd just like to talk about, and I'm very pleased to announce something tonight, the steps required to build the project. There's really four things that need to happen. You need to get site control. Well, we've got that. We've got the voluntary agreements with your constituents, the property owners in the area. You need to get your permits. That's what we're doing right now, going through the process. And obviously, this is all subject to the county's review and approval. The interconnection agreement is more of a technical matter. But the power purchaser, we've got to have somebody to sell this to. Well, a very significant event happened very recently, and that is the Illinois Power Authority awarded this development a full subscription of the renewable energy credits. What that means is this development, if you bless it, if the county board blesses it, has a very real chance of actually happening. So. We view that as very good news, but we also understand and appreciate that this is absolutely subject to your review and approval. So with that, uh, that concludes my remarks. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Mr. Fitzgerald. Um, while he's at the microphone, are there questions for him, Ms. King-Taylor? I like the idea of creating jobs, obviously, locally. Do you know who you would be employing? Have you looked at demographics and companies already in town that you would want to um, employ for this project? We would certainly want to employ locally, if at all possible, and intend to work with, by way of example, our drainage consultant uh, already has several local, I say local, Champaign County tiling firms that he's he, he would like to to use on the pattern tiling aspect of it. Ms. Furtado. I have a follow-up question that might be for you or might also sort of be for Mr. Clem. Do you, is there, are there enough electricians currently locally to, to, to do this work or are you going to have to journey people in? Just gonna say if you're gonna, and, and that's fine, Stephanie. That you asked, but yeah, we, we need. I don't know, like, which, we, I don't know if, if yeah, you knew the answer to well, that. Well, that, that's fine, but we need to have it on the microphone. So thanks for coming back up. And they tend to act up sometimes. So. <laughs> that one's flash.
All right. Sorry. <laughs> uh, that's a that's a great question. The the scale of this project, most likely, we would have to bring people in from out of town. Um, it depends on other developments in in Champaign County. Um, right now, we would we've got available uh, workforce, but you're looking at probably I'm I'm don't know exactly 2020 construction for electricians. I'm guessing somewhere in there. Uh, so we we ran some quick numbers uh, the other day, and in Unit Seven School District, we have 42 electricians that live in that school district. Um, we've got many more that live in in Champaign County. We would uh, be able to uh, substantially contribute to the project with local people, uh, but there probably isn't enough local electricians because of other work going on in Champaign. So we would have to bring in uh, out of town uh, electricians, journey people in, and it's not just electricians. Uh, there's laborers, operators concrete well i don't i don't know actually if there's much concrete but they're iron workers it's uh, a lot of trade working uh people um and the way our system works local people have the first opportunity for those jobs and when you run out of, of local labor people then you would move to out of town labor people just one more question and this might also be for you mr fitzpatrick there's i know there's 14 uh fte jobs that you, you anticipate being long term. How many of those are trade jobs? Do you know off the top of your head? <laughs> With your permission, Mr. Chairman, I, we've got Patrick Brown, the development manager, that can actually speak to the I don't, 15 jobs. I don't have any objection if there's no objection from the committee. Yeah, that's Mr. Acceptable. Brown. Patrick Brown, Baywa RE, uh, office at 17901 Von, um, Von Carmen, Irvine, California. Um, the answer to that is uh, it is it is a mix of jobs. There will be electricians because a lot of the, the things that actually do go wrong are uh, electrical problems. But then there will be people cutting grass, um, you know, maintaining just maintaining the facility itself, washing the modules. Uh, we haven't determined how many times a year, but it's a mix of jobs. There will be technical jobs though, because it is, you know, it is a highly skilled job. Um, and we do like to source those locally if we can. We don't, you know, and when things are under warranty, maybe the manufacturer may come in and take care of it when the warranty's up. It's it's all lo it's all local. We'll have our own force of Baywa people here taking care of this throughout the project. Mr. Thorsland. Uh, I did miss the microphones in my year off from working for the county. Uh, there's we talk about washing solar panels and jobs and local jobs. Is this uh, solar farms in general and yours in particular because it's so big? Is this going to be the new uh, detasseling jobs for kids in the summer? Are they going to come and wash panels? Are you do you do you have a a winter level of employment and then when you have a big job if you're going out in the spring and cleaning things up is they're going to be a, an ebb and flow of, of uh, uh, more lower skilled labor to do some of those jobs like grass cutting and things? Or do you use the same 15 people through the year and just change what they're working on? No. Typically, um, jobs like uh, mowing the grass or washing, we would hire someone local to kind of do that. I mean, the, so. yeah, I, we'd hire them and have them start probably on one side of the farm and then work for like three months and just. So it would be seasonal. Yeah, it, like grass in the summer, right? So and that FTE is sort of a, a sine wave. No, because it's such down. a large project. The FTEs will be pretty pretty consistent. Okay. Pretty much between 10 and 15 people are going to be on site troubleshooting. doing. They're also doing uh, maintenance, for, uh, future maintenance. So they'll right. be in there doing all the O&M type of stuff on the facility. So they're not always just responding to something that's broken. Um, these are, if you can imagine, they are uh, they move. Right. right? Yeah, so whenever mechanics. you have something moving, it's all, you're always going to be fixing it. So there you'll have the mechanical things that will happen, and then you'll have the electrical things that may happen. And then just the overall just running the, the facility and paying the bills and maintenance and different things like that. So then you, then you have the other people come in to support the facility. Okay. Uh, so you will have a seasonal sort of influx of extra people. During, you're right. obviously not going to go out today and wash panels uh, or cut grass. But you would have extra people that work in the summer, so it has the opportunity to provide. 
Yeah. Yeah, we should all get little headsets. I think uh, the uh, the other question I had, mostly because I didn't have the benefit of going to the CPA meeting, was, uh, you know, we talk about putting these panels up and letting the ground basically be fallow underneath, uh, similar to if somehow you had temporary trees without roots, the shade grasses and things that would be underneath. That is all very beneficial for the soil. When or if this is to terminate in 30 or 40 years and it, it does actually come out and it doesn't get upgraded into newer panels, uh, this entire time that land still is never owned by anyone but the landowner you've made the agreement with, correct? And this is probably a question for Fitzgerald. They, that, they, that's correct. It's a, we have long-term leases with the landowners. We're, and we're not purchasing any of the property. And the right is transferable to kin if uh, one of them passes that's on. Correct. So similar to what we did with the solar, I mean uh, the wind installation, that that all went with the land. It runs with their with their family. I, it, okay. We're just we're just a tenant. Okay. That's that's what I wanted to know. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Doss. Yeah, I had a couple of quick questions. Um, one deals with the washing and the amount of water. Um, is there satisfactory water on site? Do you think you'll have to drill drill a new well? Um, I saw some reference in here, but I don't remember if there was ever resolution to that question. Uh, we, we don't anticipate drilling any wells. We would just uh, procure water from the local water district and just pay them for the water and just truck it in as we, we wash the modules. So it's, we don't plan. We don't plan on having long-term wells and, and 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 drawing down from the the groundwater table. So. The, and the other thing is, um, roads. I assume will be gravel, native compacted. So we we don't propose any gravel. And the answer to concrete earlier, only very small amount of concrete in the substation. But we're trying to leave the land as natural as we can. Um, we don't prefer to, to put in gravel roads. It's usually fire authorities that want that, and we've met with the city fire authority, and they're fine with the compacted roads. Great. The only questions I have, thank you. Thank you. Further questions, discussion, comments? Um, Mr. Fitzgerald, while you have the, you're still up here, do you have any further comments? I mean, just, just asking since you're still, like I say, at the, okay. Um, anybody else since... I, I may have mentioned anybody else from the audience want to come forward at this time. Okay. Um, I guess just one comment I'll make. Um, it, it was mentioned that there's 16 landowners. Um, I know at least four of them. I guess you could say kind of five, but because um, I know the one piece of ground is owned. It, it's even listed as a husband and wife. Um, he's since passed on with cancer, which that's beside the point. Um, it'd be the ones that I know would be Mr. Terry Wolf, Kent Krukowit, um, Dave Hastings, and his brother Mike, who is the one that's passed on, but Mike and Vicki Hastings. Um, Terry Wolf and Kent Krukowit, they're both prairie farmer, master farmers and News Gazette Farmer of the Year recipients. You don't get those awards for just being a, a nice guy and a good neighbor. There, there, there's some, you have to know what you're doing. You, you're thought of real, really well in the farming community, both at the News Gazette level, kind of the regional News Gazette area, and then at the, the Prairie Farmers statewide. So, those people, those two in particular, with those awards, they, but it extends to both, to also the Hastings. Uh, knowing all, all four or five, however you want to say it, people, landowners, they're not going to go in, I don't believe, knowing the people, I don't believe that they're going to go and put their land under contract with these, with this solar farm thinking that there's really and truly any way that it's going to hurt their neighbors in this area or that it's going to really and truly hurt the ground long term. They, they have their own reasons for wanting to do this, and I can't speak to that, but um, I just don't believe, knowing them, that, they're that they would do this knowing that 
and thinking that there's any idea that it would hurt the ground for the future for when and if this solar farm is removed and it goes back into production or that they would willingly want to seriously harm their neighbors um, in that area. Um, they, they all, I believe, really and truly are farmers at heart, but they, they have their own reasons for wanting to do this, um, whether it be the idea of the green energy or what. Again, I can't speak to that because I haven't spoken to any of them, but um, I think it's, I think that was just one thing I wanted to bring up uh, myself. Um, any further before we vote, any further final comments, thoughts? Mr. Thorsman. Okay, just briefly, I wanted to bring myself up to speed. This is a, a big installation compared to what we do have uh, already out there, but it's not the first, of course. There's going to be potentially one in Carbondale that's about three-quarters this size. Kendall County did a study on home value because I know that comes up always in cases like this. There was 10 different sites. Uh, only one site had a measurable difference in home value, 2% lower. Overall, everybody's home value went up. It did not stop new construction because I know the people of the villages that signed on to that letter are worried about expansion of the village. This is pretty far away from them. It doesn't seem to stop that. Uh, there's a lot of money. We've talked about that. And we don't talk about the tax revenue, but just the jobs, that somebody points out. Uh, they're going to bring people in from other places and because they need to. While they do that, and all I can comment there is we just approved a hotel that's in the county, so maybe they could stay in that one when we're here. Uh, the, uh, the other thing that I think has been touched on, and again, I wasn't, I read the ZBA stuff, but it, it's good, I think, now to confirm that. John's talking about bringing forward an ordinance that you were a test pilot sort of for this big of scale for this particular ordinance, and it sounds like we're going to modify some of the things that turned out to be a problem that drove some of these waivers that we're talking about here, the timing of things and this uh, CR distance. So uh, I think that we've had some good discussion, and I apologize if I'm going over points that you had to go over before, but I just wanted to make sure I understood all that. So thank you. I guess I'd say, Mr. Thorsen, you fairly well summed, summed up a, a fair portion of the whole proceedings. <laughs> No, so I mean, I, just say I think you, I think you're, I think you're pretty much spot on as to how things have progressed. Um, one last chance, final comments, discussion. Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Thank you. That passes unanimously. Okay, we'll then move on to ten other business. We have a monthly report. We have both the October 2018 and November 2018. Are, is there any questions or discussion on these or anything in particular, John, that you wanted to point out? Okay, seeing none, we'll receive those and place those on file. Um, presiding officer's report, I have nothing. Um, designation of items to be placed on consent agenda. We have um, 9A, and right now we have B, but do we want to, I, I, it only, t to remind those that are especially maybe the Mr. Thorson and Ms. King-Taylor just being kind of new to the whole board, it only takes at the committee at the board level, any one person to pull anything off the consent agenda, but that another thing is, as Mr., I think God's kind of alluding, this is such a big item that we generally keep it off the consent so that whether or not the county at the county board, we actually just choose any of the members choose to have any discussion. But since it is such a big item, we generally just go ahead and keep it off the consent. So for B, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I was, I was going to make that suggestion that yeah. the, the scale of this, we yeah. probably need to keep this one off. Yeah. Plus, it's so interesting. Sure. So we'll it, it passed unanimously, which usually means it can go on to consent, but we'll go ahead and keep it off. So, so the only thing would be 9A to go on consent. And with that, 
we're adjourned. Thank you.